Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So welcome to a guide video. Now, this is something that someone requested that I do a little while ago. Uh, never really got around to doing it, but I did promise that I was going to make this video. Uh, it's basically an update of an older video I ma made, but now I now that I am a little bit more advanced in the game, um, I have more knowledge, you know, because as, as I keep playing, um, you know, there's there's new things, new monsters, new strategies, new, new everything. So... I'm going to be talking about how to sort your gems or how to like which gems to keep, which gems to sell. Um, this is mostly based on my my perspective, but I can also talk about it in the perspective of, you know, players that are progressing or players that have just started playing the game. Okay, so now I'm going to just open my up my gem inventory. I've actually been farming BA as I said I I would be doing in my um, daily video because I I've been trying to um, farm up some astro gems. So I've been farming B8 and I have a lot of these random square slot gems. Um, now they're not they're not all good and but I decided to keep all the ones that are usable um, but not 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 exactly and uh, you know at least the ones with like two two to three substats or maybe four substats if I'm very very lucky um, and just kind of kind of talk about you know which which ones I would actually keep and and why I would actually keep them. So I already sold all the flat ones, all the random flat substats. I'm already at the point where I basically will not need any of the flat gems. Flat gems being the, the gems that have a non-percent substat over here. Um, so if you have like a HP, like a flat amount of HP or amount of uh, a set amount of defense or, or attack, um, I think those are the flat gems. I basically already sold all, all of those. Now, for the purpose of this video, I decided to keep some some gems, and um, and this is basically for me for kind of more for the late game. Now, you can kind of work towards this if you're if you're a progressing player, if you're mostly farming like B8, B7, um, and you're not too concerned about you know improving your arena team too much for the for the short term, and you're more concerned about you know like. You just want to farm up enough astrogens for the next Heroes Fest. Um, you want to be able to farm up enough for new events, or if you want like faster farming teams and stuff. Um, gem quality is not going to affect it too much. Um, gem quality is mostly effective, and or affected um, when you're trying to improve uh, monsters that are, you're trying to like bring to the highest tier. And for, for most cases, I think that would be for for PvP. Um, and other in other cases, if you're at the point where you have strong enough monsters, like uh, for example, Dragon Speed 10, I would consider that pretty end game. And uh, if you're at the point where you're trying to make monsters for, or you're trying to put together a gem set for Dragon Speed 10, you want gem sets that, for example, have 100% crit rate. So you want to keep substats um, or gems like attack gems um, with substats that have higher higher crit rate percentage. Um, but most importantly, I think the best gems are definitely the gems that have resist substats and also crit rate at the same time. Now, if you look at this gem over here, um, the crit rate is 7.5, and this is actually a pretty good way to, to judge if your if your gem is able to um, you know reach 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 max crit. Because I I think one of my downfalls is some of my some of my dragon dragon speed 10 units don't exactly have 100% crit. They have 99%. And the reason for this is actually because one crit rate gem, you know, equals to 54%. And if you get a roll, it goes from 6% to 7.5, I think. I think the lowest roll on a 6-star gem is 6% for crit and 7.5 for um, for something without crit. Obviously, I, I could probably... Wait, actually, I, I don't think I have another attack substat gem I can put in here. Okay, that was that's a little bit sad. Um... But anyways, this one only has 15% crit, and 15% is already the the highest roll for a two roll crit rate substat gem. So basically, in order to get 15%, I had to roll 7.5 on one of the rolls, which is the highest possible amount of crit you can roll on one roll, and I rolled it twice for 15%. So basically, in order to reach 100%, you will need to have three rolls into crit um, from the two substats from the substats of these two gems combined the the two gems that you're not using for for attack so which means that um, you know crit rate um, intuition gems are pretty valuable for some weird ass reason I still don't have a triangle crit rate attack intuition like after like months 
of farming. But maybe that's because I'm, I've been mostly farming Dragon's B10. And uh, a lot of my golem runs I've been fa farming B8. I Basically, like, if you look at my gems, most of my gems are square because I farm B8 a lot more than the other... Um, the other dungeons. And what this means is I I'm also a lot more strict um, on my on the gems that I, I get from B8 or my square slot gems because um, square slot is is um, there's a there's a bigger supply of of square slot gems than other gems. So as you can see for the for the random Thor gem that I was using um, for for my purposes 99% I was able to boost it to 99%, which kind of kind of is enough. Um, you can see with my with my uh, Nike as well. This one are also I think one of my other gems don't have crit rate, and this one also rolled crit rate twice, which added up to 99%. Um, I think I can get another crit rate gem, just a r random attack crit rate gem to boost to 100%. Like even just throwing this in, I, I would be able to get 100% crit um, on on my dark Nike. But I I'm I'm kind of a little bit too lazy, and I, I don't really feel like investing any more resources and powering up gems because ever since I heard that they were going to rework dragons I haven't really been improving my dragons b10 team and this was the same team I've been using for I think for months already like for for at least at least two maybe three months or so so I, I haven't made any improvements for three months basically um, of that team the reason I want to show that is to you can get a good idea of how much crit you actually need in order to push to 100% crit. Now, I also have this Dark Atito, who has um, two crit rate subsat gems um, that that basically add up to 100%. So you can see this is two rolls, 14.5. Um, it's 5% off the max roll for two two rolls into crit. And this is a three roll um, into crit. And for 21%, for it's basically three rolls of seven or anything lower. Basically, it's like three rolls of seven. So the max crit for a three roll gem is basically uh let me think uh max crit for a three roll gem is 22.5 percent yes 22.5 percent for the the max roll of a crit rate gem all right so um so basically you need three rolls you you need at least three rolls on on uh, one of your gems and two crit rolls on one of your other gems and then you need a crit rate gem in order to boost a crit rate of a monster to 100% and some of these those rolls need to be they don't need to exactly be the, the max roll but um, you need to be very very close to the max roll like some, some of those rolls you can't roll like all 6% or else that wouldn't add up to 100% I think he actually has 99.5% crit on this Katito so he actually has a 5% has a crit um, that doesn't show, but it actually doesn't crit sometimes, which is pretty uh, pretty tilting. But good thing I have this other Gatito who actually does have 100% crit. Um, all right, so that's that's pretty much it um, on the explanation for pushing like the importance of like uh, kind of for crit rate substats if you're trying to push 100% crit. I'm a pretty big advocate of pushing 100% crit on most of your, the monsters that you're using for for end game, and those monsters would be for um, arena offense and for dragon speed 10 um, dragon speed 10 if you're using a lot of dark monsters since they have the dark crit advantage you want you want to make sure they have a consistent amount of damage you don't want them to all of a sudden you know not do enough damage to do what they need to do um, i think the 100 percent crit is very very important so 100 percent crit on monsters that like nukers that you're using for dragon speed 10 and nukers that you're using for pvp offense um, the reason for that 100% crit is very, very important for PvP offense is because if you... Th there are a lot of fights where if I go in and I don't crit, um, it actually messes up my plans because basically sometimes sometimes when you're using like a f full dark attacker team, um, you know, kill killing something or like barely almost killing something can make a difference in a fight. So I think uh, just one non-crit can... A lot, a lot of times it can screw up your fights quite a lot. Obviously, if you're using bruiser comps, if you're if you're running bruisers, I don't think 100% crit is all, all that important. But if you're using like a full glass cannon nuker, um, I think 100% crit is, is definitely needed if you want consistency. And that's that's how I climb on my um, on my arena days. You can if you want proof, you can look at my stream archives. How I climb on the last day of um, 
of uh, you know while I'm doing Dragon Speed 10, I go out every 10 minutes and I do arena fight, and I I, I climb from like challengers all the way to like heroes, uh, really really fast in a span of few hours, and I I basically like almost never lose a single fight, and the reason for that is because I have very very high consistency on my team. I make sure that they always every single one of my units do the exact exact job that I need them to do um, every single time and as long as you have enough game knowledge to know you know how to use those units um, the consistency helps them to you know just make sure they, they always do the, the right job so yeah that's that's pretty much it about crit um, and the other thing is resistance um, I'm basically gonna talk about crit and resistance and I'm actually gonna go into gems afterwards um, the other thing about resistance is the resistance is actually very very valuable resistance caps out at 90 at 85 percent so if you basically you add this up um, you basically cannot get over 85 percent if you try to get over 85 percent it will just cap out it will just not go any higher so it, it, for a normal monster, it will cap out at 65% um, bonus resistance, and for a light dark monster, it will cap out at 85% um, bonus resistance. You can try that. You can slap on some resistance gems onto your monsters and see see what happens. Um, if you try to go over 85 85%, it basically will not go any higher. And this actually brings me up to another subject. Um, resistance resistance gems are actually not that uh, not that valuable the the, the, the gems with uh, resistance as a main stat the reason for that is because of the the resistance capping out it actually gives too much resistance as a six star gem so it actually does cap out um, there are some some uses of resistance gems some people use them on healers for titans they basically for like a throwaway healer that they're, they're not planning on gemming up very very well um, they throw on a random resistance gem get it to plus 12 i think or I think it was like plus 12 or plus 13 that gives them like you know max resistance on an RGB monster and um, they just slap on like an HP defense gem and that monster is like somewhat tanky and has high like max out resistance so that's that's also another option but um, the reason why uh, resistance gems most people don't really use them is because it, it does cap out so if you want a monster at its maximum potential you do want a monster that has like um, that has high resistance, but mostly made off made up from from substats and stuff. Especially if you're using them for for PvP, where um, stats are very very valuable. You want to have the maximum amount of stats. I think basically boosting your resistance up from purely from substats is is uh, much much more important. Now the other subject I wanted to talk about is uh, gem sets. Um, before we actually get to clearing gems, um, we'll we'll talk a little bit about this as well. Um, gem sets is is uh is not really necessarily needed you will see me use uh, use gem sets on pretty much all my key units uh the reason for that is because i don't have a lot of um units that i'm really using if you didn't tell from the content i'm making if you've stuck with me for a while i'm not a big fan or not a big uh big titans guy i don't really enjoy or what will not enjoy I, I don't really enjoy um, doing titans too much but i i do throw in a few units that i might be able to use for titans um or, or clan battles as, as uh, some would call it but i i'm not um i'm not some someone that really really focuses on titans i although i do have some units that i kind of gem together to try to use for titans and the, and you'll see that most all the units i'm using um most of the units I'm, that i'm using not all the units are gen with a gem set and the reason for this is because i do actually um, i don't actually have that many units to gem up so i can afford to give them the kind of the the um kind of the I can only I can afford to just only keep the best of the best gems, at least the ones that are in, in sets. And you you pretty much can't do this if you're trying to gem up like you know 40 monsters at the same time. Um, and it's probably better not to. Basically, if you if you take a look at the gem sets, um, they all have some so sort of bonus, whether it be 20% extra crit, whether it be um, you know bonus attack, bonus defense, bonus whatever, and it. It all depends on what what you want that monster to do. So, for example, the nukers that I'm using for Golem Speed 10, um, I basically gem them up as full glass cannons. And the reason for that is because I don't really need them to be tanky at all. They're not going to be taking any damage throughout the waves. So, um, 
by utilizing a gem set, I can boost up the, the damage of that, that monster even more. So monsters like Fire Succubus or this Fire Persephone that I'm using, um, I'm very, very happy on putting them on a, on a Ruin or a Valor set in order to boost up their damage even more. Um, you'll see a lot of people asking if, like, you know, which gem set I should use. And the, the, the answer for this is, um, you know, for defensive monsters, obviously, if you can get Conviction, that is definitely the, the number one gem set I would um, recommend. Because Conviction is, um, is, is really valuable, because Conviction gives resistance. And resistance is probably one of the most important substats in the game. But as I explained before, you don't want resistance on a main stat because it caps out. But it's very, very valuable as a substat, and it's also very hard to push max resistance with substats. Well, it's not too hard, but it does take a little bit of effort to push uh, max resistance with substats, especially if you don't ha actually have the set bonus and you're re relying on gems. And that's where um, the convic Conviction set comes in. It gives you 20% extra bonus resistance, which is really, really nice. It helps boost up your resistance quite a lot, which means that um, through your substats, you are able to push near 100% or not 100%, but 85% resist and get it capped out. So Conviction does have that really, really nice use. In other cases where um, a monster is um, very, very strong with a certain stat, for example, like HP Aggressors or HP based um, Shielders, like Dark Cupid, or even Defense Aggressors, um, I think you know having a Protection Set is also very, very valuable because it increases the stat that they want even more. So for, for her case, it's defense. For his case, it's HP. It basically boosts up the uh, the stat that he needs even further. So I think there's there's value in the in in the life set and in the protection set as well for for those monsters. But in most cases where you're using monsters that for for debuffing, um, where when you're just um, man, do I do I even have any random debuff monsters that I I use? Wait, let me let me just uh, think about this for a second. Okay, I actually don't build for Titans at all. Damn, I, I even ungemmed this guy. Okay, um, I think some of you are extremely triggered by how I play the game. But, uh, yeah, I have zero debuff monsters. Like, I have no, like, random debuffers, like Woodley or anything like that. Um, but mostly for, for debuff monsters, you... You want to, I think resistance is much, actually far more important because those monsters you're either using for PvP or using for Titans. I think resistance is also very important in, in most of the Titans, not all of them. Um, but it's for the, just to resist their really annoying debuffs. So I think resistance, if you can try to push up resistance either with substats or with a conviction set, that's definitely um, the most important thing. So with that being said, um, you don't necessarily need to put together a gem set. If you can put together a broken set with high enough resistance, um, you know, with just three random six-star gems, if you can, if you can achieve that, then that would actually be more valuable. Because it's very, very hard to put together a conviction set and still reach max resistance, and also have the substats to push it. Remember, conviction only gives twenty percent extra resistance, and if you can get, um, you know, conviction also has a nine, like uh, resistance also has a nine percent roll for the highest roll. So if you can get like two rolls, if you can get three three rolls into resistance, that's already better than a conviction set. So basically any gem that has like four substats and has like three roll into resistance um, already, like even a, a gem with two rolls into resistance um, might already outweigh the, you know, the conviction, the conviction uh, set bonus. Because if you have all three gems with, with two rolls into resistance, that's already much much better, um, but yeah, that's that's for that's mostly for monsters that your um, kind of like throwaway monsters or titans, may, not your main monsters, unless you're a progressing player because progressing players cannot afford to put together a gem set. It's t it takes too much time to farm together an actual gem set with the right substats. It takes a lot of farming because I can go through two three hundred gems that I farm from from B eight and. Like I might only keep one, basically, and um, and that's not an exaggeration. Like I can sometimes I go through like five, maybe like yeah, like five hundred um, runs, and I keep one gem. So that's it's just it's just a sad reality. But for the sake of this video, I decided to keep um, some gems that I I think 
um, progressing players might might find handy. And I will sort out these gems and and kind of um, tell you how to how to sell these gems. So that was a pretty damn long like ex ex explanation of stats. But we're gonna actually move on to gems now and actually how to uh, how to how to how to know if they're good or if they're worth powering up. So um, anything like this for a pro progressing player is very very good. Um, the reason for for this is because this is a three substat gem and it, it's a it's a conviction three substat gem. Which means that if you can get one resist roll, it's already super, super valuable. Just think of the 20% bonus and another, you know, chance to roll into, like, if you can get a Conviction Gem with two resist roll, that's already, like, super, super valuable. Um, so basically, all Conviction Gems that are not flat and have a resist roll is actually very, very nice. So for these gems, since I'm already relatively endgame, uh, if you're a progressing player, I would actually recommend you keep this gem. Because you can, if you can just throw in, throw in one like random um, conviction set, even if they don't have no resi any resist substats, and you're putting them on an RGB monster, that's already forty percent resist. If you can get like one substat on each gem, um, there's a possibility of you getting another twenty percent resist, which already puts you at sixty percent resist, which is relatively high. It's not the highest, but it's uh, it's already pretty good. So. Um, you know, just imagine if you can get, like, if, even if this one has no resist, you get another random Conviction Gem that has, like, two rolls into resist, and that's already super good, and you can already get, uh, you can already get reach, like, 60% resist, um, on that monster with just those two gems alone. If you can get a third one with, like, just one more roll into resist, or two, even two more rolls into resist, you might be able to reach, you know, 70% resist, which, uh, in most cases should, uh, suit you very, very well, so... Um, conviction set is, is definitely quite valuable even if they don't have all the right substats. So what I like to do with three substat gems, as you as you guys might know, um, the substats in the in on your gems, um, whenever you power them up to a multiple of three, they give you one extra substat. So a gem that comes with three substats, if it if you power up to three, it gives you a fourth substat, and once you power up to six it will uh, roll into one of those four substats and give you an extra, extra roll in one of the four substats. So for, for this gem, I'm going to upgrade it to plus three. Um, for, for, my for my purposes, if it does not spawn resist, I will sell this gem because it has no use um, and it spawn recovery. So for a progressing player, even a gem like this, I think is still somewhat valuable because it has one substat that is, uh, that is still pretty good. Now, if this was a gem that came with um, came with three substats that were all flat, I would have sold it without powering up to plus three. The reason for that is because although it has the potential to give me resist and also roll three times into resist, I'm already at the point where even if I get get max resist on a monster, um, I still need other substats to make that monster stronger. I might need if I'm using like a bruisery monster, I might need some attack substats, um, some crit substats to make that monster even better. So if it already comes with a like all flat substats, um, it's already not really worth my consideration. But I think for mo most progressing players, if it comes with three substats, and one of those substats is usable, you can try powering up to plus three, see what it spawns. And I think if you're really, really early on, like if you're at the point where you don't even have that many good gems, um, this gem is actually worth keeping for a while, but it's not really worth using because the substats of these gems are not too good. And it actually might be better if you're at the point where you're only farming B8 and you're trying to progress into B, B7, or maybe if you're only farming B8 and B7, you're trying to progress into B9 and B10. Um, then I would say substats that come with four substats and have like nice substats are actually much, much better than set gems that come with, um, you know, one or two like decent substats. So for me, I'm just gonna sell this now. It has no no use for me anymore. Now I think I kept a pretty good gem for a progressing player. Now this this is a good gem for a progressing player. Now this is a gem of fortitude. Now fortitude gives a pretty shitty set bonus of a flat 150 defense. It's not really even worth considering. However, this gem does come with four substats at level one, and it comes with four pretty decent substats. Now this gem I think is definitely a keeper for most progressing players because it's a crit rate gem, it has resist, has attack, it has defense, um, it has one flat attack which is not too nice but still pretty good because if you power this up to plus 12, 
you will get you'll be able to get, have the opportunity to get four rolls into any of these four substats if it rolls into any of these three if you get some bonus resist some bonus attack um this gem is already much much better than any conviction gem that you put or any like if you're using this on, on attacker it might already be better than any um you know valor gem if it rolls into attack and also um it's much much easier to put together a set with a broken set than it is to get to put together a whole entire valor set um so i think for progressing players trying to not aim for the gem set but to aim for gems with good substats is actually more much more important so we're gonna um for my purposes if it rolls into this flat attack once and on the plus six roll, if it does not even roll into resist once, it's already of no value, to, of val no value to me. So um, I I would actually sell this unless it rolls into attack twice on the plus three and the plus six. Then it might be a very very good gem for like a full glass nuker build or bla glass cannon build. But I, I still would value the resist a little bit more. So it rolled into defense once. Um, I'll roll this into plus six. It, it could possibly go into the resist. If it does not, then I, for my pers for my my own purposes, I will I will sell this gem. But um, as you can see, like if you already get this gem that rolls into like you know defense once, it rolls into resist. Now this look at this gem, like it's already it's at plus six, and this is already better. Like this already gives you almost this set bonus of conviction. Um, and plus it gives you extra attack, extra defense. Now compared to that gem, I shouldn't have sold it. It was it was a, it was a, it was my mistake. I should have actually kept the gem. But if you remember the gem, the other conviction gem that I sold just now had four percent HP, um, and and three useless substats. This gem is already much much better than that gem, because of how it gives me attack, um, thirteen percent defense and sixteen percent conviction or sixteen percent resist, um, already. Even if I was to get super lucky on the on the plus six roll on that gem and it rolled into HP, this gem would still be more valuable because if I just roll into resist one more time, it's already like much much better than a conviction gem. Plus, um, I already I already get the I get the bonus of the defense and the attack that it has already. And this is a, keep in mind this is only plus six. So if I get this to plus twelve, it still gives me two more rolls, two more chances to get these substats even higher. So this gem, I think for a progressing player, gems like these are very, very valuable. For me, for my purposes, um, it's not too valuable for me unless I am trying to get like a super high resistance gem or something like that. So I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just leave that gem be for now. Um, I'm also a lot more strict with my, uh, with my with my gems like I don't really like to keep non set gems and for for my square slot gems I'm super super strict with them I basically sell all the all the ones that aren't too good now this is another one with with three substats but all three of these substats are good and it's a it's a non flat gem it's an HP gem with 9% resist which is the highest roll in resist it also has crit rate and crit damage now crit rate and crit damage is also usable on almost all monsters even if they don't have any sort of attack um, having some crit rate and crit damage can actually increase their their DPS of random monsters by a little bit um, so these two sub substats are by no means you know bad they're they're actually pr pretty good so I'm gonna power this up to plus plus three um, and see what it gives me if it gives me any substat that's non-flat, this already becomes a really, really good gem for like um, progressing players. Okay, give me percent recovery. Now, as you might know, um, I forgot to talk about recovery. I'm sorry. Uh, I actually forgot to talk about recovery. <laughs> the uh, the stat that uh... now recovery actually has a purpose in the in Monster Super League. Believe it or not, it basically exists for the sole purpose of cucking you. Now, the game can't let you have all the best gems in the world, so they need to create this this substat that just exists solely to cuck all your monsters and your gems, just to just to make sure that um, there's a separation between the good gems and the the mediocre ones. Basically, the recovery is the is the thing that separates the two. Like if this was a good, like if this was a great gem, it would have been uh, like resist, crit rate, crit damage, and like defense or something like that. 
but instead it gave me recovery, which means that it has a chance to roll into that recovery, wasting a roll. Instead of giving me, for example, if it gave me 6.5% defense and rolled it, and it would actually give me like 13% defense, which is actually quite nice. But instead it rolls into recovery, which means that if it rolls into recovery again, or actually it's already not that nice because the 16%, 16.5% recovery could have been like 5% defense, which would have been much, much better. Would have made my monsters much tankier. Um, and sometimes 5% defense can make all the difference in between a monster dying and surviving um, in certain situations. So I think recovery has a purpose in the game. It basically is to separate the really like the best of the best gems with the ones that are somewhat mediocre. Um, if you have a recovery substat, basically. So yeah, that's that's kind of the purpose of these gems. Uh, for my pur pur for my purposes, this gem is already not really worth considering. I'm going to sell it now. For a progressing player. I think this gem is still very, very valuable because if you roll into plus six, it has a chance to go into resist and crit rate. Um, crit damage in most cases is not too valuable in tanky monsters. I would not say this is a uh, like if this was defense percent instead, or if the, even if this was attack percent, it might still be more valuable. I think um, having crit rate and attack percent might actually increase the DPS of your monsters a little bit more because of the nature of this gem. It might not increase the DPS of all monsters. Say for example, you're running this on a dark monster built with 100% crit, uh, the 5% crit damage actually might be more valuable than the 5% um, attack because you might be going like attack uh, crit rate, actually if, you, if you're going like attack crit rate HP, um, actually no, attack might still be better. Yeah, attack is always better than, than defense, just just scratch that, Att I mean attack is always better than crit damage, Just just like, in 99% of the time, like, attack is always better than crit damage. So, if this was attack, this actually might be a little bit more valuable to me. So, I'm gonna just, uh... I'm gonna just get rid of it right now. Um, the, the most important substats that you can have on gems is... It's number one, resist. Resist is always number one one like most valuable because resist can be used on attackers it can be used on it can be used on attackers and and tanks as well so if you use them on and when i say tanks i don't just mean the hp based ones i mean also the defenders which are like defense based ones but any tanky monster or attack type monster can both use um resist because resist is pretty much useful globally it's just not as useful in certain golem dungeons but in a lot of cases in titans or any end game related stuff um, resistance is usually pretty nice i wouldn't say always but usually pretty nice so resistance is definitely number one on the list um, then after that is crit rate crit rate most of the time can increase the damage of a lot of your monsters most of the some of the best nukers in this game are um, crit based monsters also a lot of the really good nukers in this game are um, are also dark type and dark type do have that nice 100% base crit damage so you want to take advantage of that by having high crit rate so the two more most invaluable the two most valuable substats are um, resist and crit rate uh, um, just yeah just just for those reasons Well, wow, this this one's this one's really bad. Now, in most cases, I would not um, I would not use any of these like I would not use any like two substat gems. And the reason for that is if I'm using a two substat gem and I'm trying to push crit rate of this gem really really high, then I basically need need these two to. Well, obviously, it doesn't matter what these two roll into if I'm only concerned about the crit rate. Um, I. I need both the plus 9 roll and the plus 12 roll to roll into crit rate and I have a 1 in 4 chance of that happening which is like each time which is really low so I, if I need it to happen a second time it's a 1 in 16 chance of that happening which is pretty uh, pretty damn low um, so I I try to you know increase my odds a little bit um, when I instead of having it roll like only two chances to roll if i have three substats it means that i can try to get it on the plus six plus nine and the plus twelve um which means my chances of having more like it going to crit rate more is actually higher if you if that makes any sense 
Um, the other reason is if if I'm using sub gems with um, two substats, um, even if it gives me like you know this is an HP gen, even if it gives me something like defense and um, attack, the defense and attack will are, rolls are limited because I only get two more rolls on the plus nine and plus twelve. So the substat of a gem that comes with only two substats versus the substats of a gem that come with four substats, um, the you know the the substat value is always going to be higher on the ones with four substats, which means no matter what, as long as the all four of those substats are usable substats, or if they're good substats, or even if they're not all good substats, even if it, it even if it's a gem that comes with three substats and one um, resist, like it still has higher potential than this gem because of the potential of it rolling to resist multiple times, um, to 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 basically make it so that gem is like you know like a super super op godly gem whereas whereas this gem has doesn't have that potential at all like there's a zero percent chance of it being a you know 30 percent resist gem um or or uh, like a more than 20 percent actually no this this has a chance to become more than 20 percent but it, it doesn't have a chance to become like a you know more than 25 percent crit rate gem um so i just sell it i just it has no uh like it, it can't, it can't, uh, it can't meet my, can't meet my standards anymore. Basically, your standards get higher and higher as you, as you, the more you play the game because you, um, you expect more. You expect like your your gems once they get to a certain point, um, you only keep the ones that are super super good, and you you sell the ones that are not, um, not as valuable. So this is a four subset gem. Um, I would say I would not say this is too good, but for a progressing player, it's definitely usable. For the vitality set, since it gives recovery, I would also treat this as a flat gem. Although vitality set does work on some healers, um, you know healers can actually use recovery, but that's also also mostly for titans. Um, I do not keep any of my recovery gems. If I do need to, no, actually I don't need to. I <laughs> I have a I don't I don't really have any use of the recovery gems. Um, I also have some gems with like pretty that roll pretty poorly at plus 12 and have pretty high recovery substats. I could also um, use those. A lot of my gems that I roll to plus 12, I, I just keep. Um, I throw them on random monsters. I don't really sell them. So if I really need to boost my recovery up, I can I can do it with substats. I can I can boost it pretty high with substats. But I think recovery does have a little bit of use to to use on some healers for titans. Um, if you have like a actual recovery gem with like all really good substats. It does have its uses. You can actually use that on some healers for um, for some Titan comps. Obviously, I'm not too familiar with Titans. I don't really do it too much, um, but it does have some use. But for me, gems like these are mostly for for um, for broken sets. I don't really need to put this put the vitality set together and sacrifice substats. So for these gems, I'm usually a lot more strict on the substats. For a progressing player, I think this is not too bad because um, obviously it's a four substat defense gem and it has like one HP roll. Although these are really, really poor. Like it has two recovery and one crit damage and these are not really all that useful for, for players. Um, say for example, this was a gem with HP percent, flat HP and like, you know, flat defense and maybe flat recovery or something like that um even the flat defense rolls and flat hp rolls can still be pretty valuable because it makes your monsters tankier but for this gem it has no no real use for a progressing player because you're not too concerned without about resistance and recovery when you're progressing through golems um so for most of the gems that for people that are already farming um even for people that aren't on B8 yet, if you can get, like, if you're using the 4-star gems off, off of Pagos Coast, if you can get some HP substats or, you know, defense percent substats, that's actually really, really valuable. Um, and that's, that's, those are the substats you want to aim for early on. If you want to get some, get some HP, um, some defense, or some, even some flat HP, some flat defense, those are, those are the substats you, you actually really really want early or flat attack or any sort of crit rate because crit rate you don't need crit damage to boost your crit rate up but you need high crit rate to make crit damage effective so crit damage is not also not very valuable on non um, crit based monsters so for this gem i would usually sell it um if you're really really desperate for a defense percent 
square slot gem, but I don't think you would be if you're constantly farming B8. So for most people, I don't think this gem is um, is all that valuable. But something like this, something that has uh, defense resist and crit rate, um, it's a three slip stat gem. It actually has pretty high potential because it can actually give you pretty high crit and also pretty high resist. And depending on what it rolls into, it's that it can actually be a pretty nice gem. Um, usually I don't like to keep this because the, the resist roll is actually quite low. Um, and it already has one flat substat. For me, because my uh, my tolerance is already really, really low, I would usually sell this gem. But if for, for anyone progressing, I think this gem is worth keeping because you can actually power it up see what it gives you if you're a progressing player even if it gives you flat hp flat defense it's still somewhat valuable because that hp and defense can add to the overall tankiness of your monsters um especially if you're at the point where you don't have um you know if you don't have the the uh the ability to really put together a really really nice gem set you you won't be able to take advantage of the bonus um like you know having 500 extra HP is actually pretty nice, although it's not as nice as putting together a life set that gives you 20% bonus HP, but it's still pretty good um, if you're at the point of progressing. But for me, this gem is already not really, uh, not, not usable. That one was pretty nice. This one... This one has a... It has HP, as has crit rate. Has, it's a 3 substat gem. Now, I'm also pretty tolerant on um, conviction gems. Well, tolerant being that I usually keep them, but I don't always keep them. Because what I, I do with these gems is, since it's a 3 substat gem, and it already has 7.5 crit rate, which is the highest roll, I try to roll and see if I can get resist, and get a high roll on resist. If I can get a high roll on resist, I basically keep this gem. If it gives me anything other than resist, although it gave me a max roll on defense, which is really, really nice, this all of a sudden becomes a gem that is like 50-50. It can roll into these two subsets, or it can roll into these two. Although the, the two rolls are really, really nice, um, I don't have much use for this because usually when I'm trying to use a conviction gem, I'm trying to boost my resistance much higher. And it's more of a waste. It's, I'm probably better off using a gem like this than a gem like this. You know, if you if you guys get what I'm saying. Because this already gives me 13% defense and 16% resist. I have a 1 in 3 chance of it rolling to something pretty nice. And, um, you know, this this already gave me resist. So, like, I, I don't need to aim for resist anywhere else. If I can get another gem that has 2 rolls into resist, it already outweighs the conviction. Like, it, it heavily outweighs the conviction. Um set bonus because in order to to get that much resist i would need to get two conviction gems with two resist rolls on it which actually is much harder to do than to get any random gem with two resist rolls on it with this i can use any two random gems it can be from any set as long as it has two resist rolls it will outweigh using um this gem on a set so for me i would not keep any any conviction gems um without any resist basically but that's just me. If you're at the point where you're still progressing or you need to have monsters with high resist, um, keeping that gem is actually pretty valuable. But I think this... I actually hope that this uh, this shows you guys that um, a lot of times having having broken set could be higher higher value than having a an actual set bonus. Um, depending on the substats, obviously. Now this is a protection one. Um, it, ha it has resist, but it's also attack, which is not too valuable on a protection set. And it's also not a high roll, and these two rolls are already flat. Even if it rolls into something nice like crit rate, which probably is the best possible roll, it still becomes 50-50. So I don't really want to waste my resources um, doing that. So I'm, I'm most of the time I just sell gems like this. This one um, it has crit rate, it's an HP gem. It has recovery, which is uh, not too bad. Now, for a progressing player, you can roll once. Since this has 7% crit rate, which is relatively high, it's only 5% off the max roll. Um, if you roll something like defense, or if you roll something like resist, this already becomes a pretty decent gem. But for me, since even if it roll, gives me the best roll, which is resist, it's still a 50-50 chance for it to roll into something good. Also, this is not a gem on any sort of gem set, which means that as, as long as it had, as um, if it doesn't have too good of, of a substats to begin with, then I would no normally not um, not keep this gem. So I sell this. 
So out, out of uh, all the six star gems you saw just now, which is quite a, quite a few, it's definitely quite a lot of runs of six star gems. Um, I kept this one, and this is still for me not like not 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 too good basically. So I yeah, this is just me uh, clearing out some uh, some gem inventory. Wait, where do I keep this one? Well, this has four substats. It has eight percent resist. There's only one way I, I don't, I don't know. Some people like to gamble with it, but I, I don't have a lot of resources. Also depends on how much resources you have. If you're, uh, if you're constantly farming golems, you should have a lot of resources to try to power up some gems. But I think I'm already at the point where, like, I have most of the gems I need for all my units. I can gem up anything any way I want, and I'm still looking for the like those best of the best gems, like the ones that are separated by. Uh, <laughs> By that, by that really, really fine line, you know that 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 separates the good gems from the truly, truly great ones. Um, so for me, this is a gem. Like it's it's actually worth gambling for, especially if you're a progressing player. Because think about it like this: it has resist, it has two HP, and it has defense. And it's a defense gem, so it has all the defensive substats. So you can actually make your monster super, super tanky with this. And if you're an endgame player, you can actually, if you have the resources, you can actually try powering up, the, up this gem. Because since it's a 4 substat gem, if it rolls into like resist 3 times, it becomes like a super, super, really good tank gem. Because it has like super high resist, you know, it can outweigh a lot of, uh, it can he heavily, heavily outweigh using a conviction set. If you put, put together three, 3 gems with like 30% resist, you can easily max out resist. Um, even on a monster, on a light dark monster. So I think um, if you have the resources, I think this is something that you can kind of gamble with. I actually was trying to save it and see if I can if I can upgrade this into like a super high re resist gem. Basically, if I get, I can I can try. I think for the sake of the video, I'll do it. Normally, I probably wouldn't. Um, there's no right and wrong. But if it rolls into any of the flat ones, even once. I would just be ready to sell it. Well, obviously, for a progressing player, you can still keep it and try try your luck and see uh, see if you can get anything good. Um, but yeah, that that is that is pretty much it. That's how I sort my gems. Hopefully, this this helps you guys out. Um, early game, I think the it's still nicer to use defense because when you're at the point when you're using gems that are actually worth keeping for the long term. Um, most of your monsters should be five star and six star, so in in that case, um, using a percent bonus would would heavily outweigh the the flat bonus. And obviously, when you eventually get your monsters to six stars, using the percent bonus like of, of substats is much much better than the uh, than the flat bonus. Um, for the dragon gems, I just keep whatever. Like it, it, as long as they're not flat on the normal <laughs> substats, I just keep them. I keep all of them. Like even have the the shittiest substats ever, as long as they're like pugilist set, I still uh, I still keep them around. Although some of them are really sad. Yeah, all of them are really sad. It's real. It's really hard. It's it's super hard to put together a really nice set. Um. But yeah. Anyways, that is uh that is that is pretty much it. That's pretty much it for sorting out gems. Um, that was a pretty pretty long video, but hopefully this helps you guys out. I did explain um, the stats, explain you know the the gems and stuff, um, and why I would try to keep certain gems, you know, and what to what to aim for um, in the late game. But yeah, you can be a little bit more lenient on monsters that you're kind of gemming out for titans because you can't afford to have like all the best of the best gems on on all your titan monsters uh, you can only do that for for a few the, the the ones that you you use for like really really end game stuff like you know end game pvp and stuff um, those are the monsters that you would try to gem up with the the best of the best gems um, but anyways that is pretty much it for this video so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out